Greetings and welcome to Epic Battle Cry! This is the place where we cut through the crap to bring you the real deal on the gaming industry today. I am Brent Adams, joined by my presenters of pummeling, my keynoters of cataclysm, <laughs> Tony Almost Grice and Daniel we're Kaiser. We're What's spot. going on, fellas? What's up, buddy? We just finally realized that he actually can't read. And after all these years... Keynote, no keynoters of cataclysm. I think is great because you know the Apple keynote might not, not actually be a ago. word, but you know, I mean, this is the internet age. There's all kinds. I mean, you know, you could just make stuff. There's up. all kinds okay. of shit that's not actually words. That and I'm doing great to answer your question. It's Thursday. I don't know if people know this. We but, do. Oh, Stop yes, there. Okay. We do. We know. <laughs> we know. Um, everybody, welcome to uh, as Daniel said, it's Thursday, September mm. the twenty fifth. 2015 in case you find yourself in the middle of a lame sci-fi movie with a time travel plot and you need to know that information Uh, um today's question Mm. comes from a A. ron who is aaron i I beg to differ sir uh it's a ron a i i think people name themselves like that because they always want people to say hi to them first so hey hey, ron uh so it's at a a ron 17 hmm on Twitter, and yeah, Aaron a- a- says there. this at Epic Battle Axe. <laughs> what do the Axe Lords think of Apple's focus on the iPhone 6 Plus as a gaming device? Of course, mm. we teased this on the last episode, which is two weeks ago now. But uh, we teased this on the last uh, on, on the last week's worth of shows, S- somewhat of Epic Battle Cry, because we were anticipating the iPhone launch as uh, as many other people were mm. and uh, at this point uh, we've got all the deets and everything on the iPhone 6 the iPhone 6 Plus which is the, uh, the large Cadillac screen version of the iPhone and Apple was very quick to point out uh, just uh, just what a great gaming device it could be of course this is not all that unusual they've been doing a lot of game related stuff during their keynotes for both the iPhone the iPad as well um, yeah. so what do you, what do you guys uh, obviously I've got opinions on this I know that you guys do too Tony Wait, Brent has an opinion? What do you what do you think, man? <laughs> uh, well, like you said, I mean, honestly, Apple has never really shied away from the fact that they they you know look at or at least in the in the last few years that mm-hmm. they see the iPhone as a quite a quite a big you know device in terms of you know gaming potential uh, and, and their marketplace. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I think we've we have talked about just how much the I'm playing the a game on and, my and iPhone right now. General. Keep talking though. Yeah, mm-hmm. the uh, how just smartphones in general have taken away uh, a significant chunk of of a lot of the the mobile gaming market. I mean, yeah. you look at I, I think you know things like the the 3ds to a lesser degree. Although I think the 3ds would be you know even bigger if mobile gaming wasn't where it is over the last few years. And I think definitely you look at something like the the PlayStation or the PS Vita is is hurting just because you've got you know so many options out there to play on, in a mobile gaming space. So yep. I don't know. I'm not too surprised by it. I do like the fact that they really are addressing you know some something Apple gets a lot of criticism for is you know I mean everybody was talking about how hey the they just announced a phone that Android users have had for you know three years or whatever mm-hmm, right. you know they, they look at things in terms of the actual end use like you know what the experience is like what the um, you know optimizing it making sure that it's actually thing because I mean if that was the case everybody would just go out and buy this you know a Nexus you know phone from three years ago the fact is it really wasn't you know the the, the things that they brought to the table there are not the same as what you know is being brought to the table now when you look at metal like the way the programming language which is I guess maybe similar to something like you know yeah uh, like assembly or talking directly to the hardware yeah, this is more like mm-hmm. mantle on AMD this is like where yeah. you've got this very very thin layer of of, of programming language between your application and the hardware. It, basically, right. you can get you can get you know much more out of uh, the performance out of the chips that are on there than than you could before. You, right. They've kind of taken away a, a lot of layers of, of garbage that they used to have to go through, and so it frees it up to make make games you know that much more um, you know graphically intensive, that much more you know you can use the the CPU and GPU to to do much more AI. Basically, you can just make the games better. Better, yeah. and I you know I think it's a great thing. I I'm very excited to see you, they saw and I, I am I'm what's the what was the name is like uh iron what was the name of the game they showed oh, the demo uh, they showed the uh, the one for the uh for, for like the the uh the MOBA 
Yeah, yeah. Like um, but anyway, I can't remember the name of it right now. But like, you look at it, and you look at you know graphically, very impressive. I mean, frankly, graphically goes Vainglory, up against some stuff. You, Vainglory. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. It, it would go up against stuff that's current gen. And when I say current yeah. gen, I'm I'm saying like current gen, like PS4, PS, uh, Xbox One, PC type stuff. I mean, it looked very, very good. It's it's getting to the point where the graphics on on the mobile platforms are amazing. Yeah. And and mm-hmm. you look at it, in some cases you're playing them on screens that are higher resolution than what you're playing at home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, on your console, <clears throat> on your yep. TV. True. So. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's a, I think it's a huge deal. I think it's, you know, yeah. uh, but, but at the same time, I, in, in a way, I, I don't think it's a new thing for them. I think it's just uh, a evolution of what they've been doing for a long time. Yeah. Daniel, what's your read? Well, my read is this. Uh, honest, I'll be completely honest with you guys and everybody. To me, That's, this that'll is be a nice thing. change. Hang on, I want to sit down for this. Yeah, <laughs> have you been standing up this whole time? Absolutely. Um, yes. You pants? Not? No pants. Um, no so pants. anyway, this to me, like. This is the most exciting space right now, uh, th- this mobile market, and also kind of what people have been referring to as the mid-core market, mm. because th- it's a growing sector. Like, to me, the way things have kind of changed over the years, you know, with, with uh, w- the, you know, there's obviously still a huge install base of people who have uh, the time and, and the expendable income to to play multiple you know 20 30 40 50 100 hour games per year but the the truth is that mid-core market which is consisting mostly of guys and girls who have grown up playing games love games but now they've got responsibilities they've got family they've got jobs it's harder and harder to find the time to play through games so i know me personally you know looking at the landscape of gaming it's like there will be those few games per year probably at this point it's down to four or five games per year that are on an xbox one or a ps4 that are the top level experiences with you know maybe you know dozens of hours of gameplay that i'll be able to invest in aside from that like tony was saying the, the the nature of these platforms with the iPhone and and now the iPhone six it's closing the gap on the PS Vita it's closing the gap on the 3DS yeah. and the experiences that they're able to bring to the table are great you know I personally actually have been um, there's a studio here in Colorado Backflip Studios they their most recent release a game called Spellfall that's the game that I've been playing the most as of late it's kind of like just a match three rpg where you upgrade your character and do stuff i but saw I that, that yeah i've seen that game it's a great game yeah. and and you know to be full disclosure i'm actually talking with them about maybe you know actually uh i've visited with them in the studio and that's a very exciting space for me and uh you know i might actually be doing some stuff with them which is great in the future but at the end of the day it's because that is is part of the fact that this is the most exciting space to me right now. The the destinies of the world. I'm I'm very much looking forward to Dragon Age Inquisition, but I'll buy J- Dragon Age and I will probably take three months to beat it because there's so much content there. But these games within that mid core type of uh, uh, space where I can have access to them. They're designed for quick play sessions, and they're they're very accessible. That that's more appealing to me now more than ever because of my lifestyle. So I, I think the iPhone six and the iPhone six plus, you know, because of the processing power, because of the screen size, that this is facilitating the growth of that mid core market, and it's a very exciting thing right now. So I, you know, to me, I, I look at studios like Backflip and and uh, Supercell and things like that, and say, hey, there's some great opportunities there, and I'm excited to see what happens in the future. Well, I think I'm going to end up uh, I'm going to end up agreeing with both of you uh, because uh, you both said things that I agree with, and you know, as a uh, as a recent uh, parent. Uh, I can totally identify with what you're saying, Daniel. As a matter of fact, on this uh, this most recent episode of the Axe Factor, or actually, no, I guess it'll be last week's by the time you hear this. But uh, anyway, on uh, on last week's episode of the Axe Factor, I was talking about uh, th- like the main game that I've been playing for the last few weeks is Star Wars Commander on the right. iPhone, which is you know this free to play RTS. Yeah. And I mean, I've just been playing the bejesus out of it, and really, yeah. really having a good time with it. And these games are good now; they're they're they, not. They are. I, 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 I think there was a stigma in the past that it's like, oh, you're playing a game on your iPhone, and what is it, Angry Birds? And, and it's like, and, you know, and they have like improved lame. drastically in yes. a short period of time too. There, there's, and they're only getting better. And there's and a lot of me, good games in the space now, but it's because I think they're yeah. figuring out what does and doesn't work 
for right. the platform, uh, you know? Yeah, um, touchscreen controls. T- with, touchscreen you know, controls lend themselves to certain ty- types of gameplay experiences, yeah. and, and devs are figuring that out. And I, I think that that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's great. I mean, you know, that, that's, that's very, very, uh, that's very, very good, you know, good for us. I mean, it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean that, like, the experience of playing something like, um, like a Legend of Zelda: Link Between Worlds on the 3DS, like that game is is amazing. You know that game is amazing. Yes, it, it's absolutely fantastic, and I wouldn't trade playing it for anything. Right. Um, and I and I don't know that you could do. I don't know that you could do that game as well uh, if you didn't have the physical controls. Well, uh, I, I, you know, you might be able to come close, it, but you know, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would not play it at all. I couldn't play it at all. I, I can't no, stand. No, and, and but th- right. that's the thing. It's not that it's going to supersede or replace. It's no, just that it's just, it's just it's just different. It's just like over it, here you got this. Over thing. here you got and, this. But that doesn't mean. And I think, in my opinion, is that in the next six months to a year. Uh, it's going to become m- more relevant that these kind of mobile games are being legitimized by hardcore gamers because they're going to start incorporating mechanics and things that say, hey, you can actually have a great story in one of these mobile games. You can have yeah. uh, you know, great elements of gameplay that feel compelling, and they're not all about just monetization. They're about you know actually implementing great gameplay. So I think some studios are going to step up and do it. Obviously, you know, I'm might help with that but anyway the bottom line yeah, is good that, luck with that by the way thank you but at the end of the day you know i really honestly think that the, the uh, you know as apple pushes forward they trust me they want their phone that does everything else they want their device to be seen as a great gaming device which sure. is why they're investing in that and i think that it's beyond the point of wishing it to happen and it's just simply up to developers i mean the the hardware specs are there the you know ubiquitous nature of the device is there it, it the platform is there everything is there and ready for this to happen so this to me that's why i say this is the most exciting space because because as much as I'm excited about a Dragon Age Inquisition or whatever, they're going to be iterations on a proven formula. Now it's time to see what's possible in the palm of our hand yeah. and in our pockets. Well, you know? and the thing is, if, if if you're right, and if that if that space can really ignite with you know with some innovation and creativity, and, and you know suddenly you know people see this dramatic I- increase in the quality of games coming out, which I, I really I really do truly I believe so. that we're already seeing. I was going to say um, I think that's already kind of yeah happened. I I, I, f- yeah. I feel like that that's already happening. But if it happens on 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 an even bigger scale, if if it happens uh, you know with even more types of games and and you know even more uh, I- you know innovative kinds of developers getting involved in, in things like that. I, I, I do I do kind of agree with you, Daniel, in the sense that th- there's the potential there's the potential for a, a really big sea change, just in the sense that you know we all already yeah. kind of you know it's it's like the game console we all already own or whatever exactly. So you, if exactly. you know if all that kind of pans out the way you're saying, that would be uh, that'd be really fantastic. But you know, just for my own part, I think that uh, I think Apple's very wise to uh, they're very wise to you know to focus on this. They're very wise to take this into consideration. I think that the people who are running Apple right now um, realize that, and, 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 you know, Steve Jobs was was kind of infamous, I guess, for just not understanding gaming and, and why it would ever be a priority. And, you know, consequently, he never made it a priority. Right. And I think, you know, like, just imagine, you know, how different the world would be if Microsoft had never bought Bungie and Halo had come out and been a Mac-exclusive game as it was originally intended to be. You know, Interesting. How, how different would the world, you know, look now? Would that game have ever saw the same amount of success it did, uh, you know, on that platform? You, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting kind of puzzle. But the point point is that um you know for for better or worse um apple staked its claim within uh, you know originally the pc market um and, and didn't really make games uh, much of a focus microsoft did and yeah. so you now really see like a strong delineation between those but it seems like you know with these kind of post pc devices um and the fact that you know that Jobs is is obviously dead now and 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 hasn't you know been running day to day shit at Apple for a long oh. time, you can see that uh, you can see that Apple definitely seems to be taking a very very different uh, you know track with these machines, and I, I think that they're wise to do so. And um, yeah. so anyway, I, I feel like I'm just kind of repeating stuff that you guys have already said now, so I'll shut up. But um, <laughs> thank you very much for the question, A. Aaron. We appreciate A-Ron. it. 
If you guys have a question that you'd like us to answer in a future episode of the show, you know where to find us at Epic Battle Axe on Twitter. We're on YouTube.com slash Epic Battle Axe. Like the show. Subscribe to the show there. Hit us up with anything you want to see uh, discussed on another episode. We're going to be back tomorrow with an all new edition of Epic Battle Cry fueled by your questions and suggestions for Daniel Kaiser, Tony Grice. I'm Brent Adams. And remember, cry havoc and let your voice be heard. There you go. And check out Spellfall. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I gotta make a note to myself.